Hello and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo where I'm attempting to add every single animal in Planet Zoo into this one franchise zoo. We're up to 147 animals in the zoo so we're getting close to the end. Today is a cat heavy day so lots of cats going in. But starting us off today we've got an exhibit species. It's a red-eyed tree frog. Oh, and apologies, the lag today is particularly bad in this zoo. I don't know what's going on, but it's absolutely awful today. Anyway, here you go. Red-eyed tree frog on the window there, looking very colourful with its blue stripes. And in the exhibit space right next to the puff adder there that we put in last week. For habitat species, today we're starting off with the reindeer. This is a great addition to the zoo. The reindeers are really good to work with. They're a confident species, so no need for the one-way glass malarkey. And they don't need a huge amount of space. That surprised me a bit. I assumed reindeers would need quite a bit of room, but they're quite happy with this space that I've allocated out for them. For the habitat here, I've gone quite simple on this one. We've got a bit of a woodland going on and quite a basic shelter here. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to get something up relatively quickly, so indeed that's what we've got going on here. In my defence, the reindeers were genuinely very easy to please, so they didn't make it difficult for me at all. So I won't linger on this, let's take a quick look around. Here we've got the lovely reindeer into the zoo. <laughs> Not at all a weird species to be putting in in the middle of summer, hey? Ah, look how good it is though. Very gentle animal. And of course, being a confident species, the guests getting a fantastic view here. We've already drawn quite a crowd here with the reindeers. So that one up front's the male and we've got two females sitting at the back here. Where I've put the hard shelter in this enclosure, it creates a bit of a privacy space at the back here for the reindeers if they want to get away from the crowds a little bit. The hard shelter for the reindeers, well, it's my classic shed look I'm going for here, aren't I? Nothing spectacular going on here, so I'd say let's just move on to the next animal. Next is the saltwater crocodile and just two crocodiles needed to meet the social needs here. Crocodiles? Well, all the large reptiles in Planet Zoo actually. I don't have a great track record of making nice enclosures for them. They're a fussy species to work with because their hitboxes are so big. I genuinely struggle to make nice enclosures for them because you are quite limited in what you can do for reptilians that are this big. One of the fundamental rules with this zoo, I've been going for the smallest habitats that I can get away with. Without adding significant extra space for the crocodiles, you have to be very careful with how you lay out a crocodile habitat. They're quite fussy with the area they can navigate, so I have to make sure this is quite flat. It'd be nice to have a bit more freedom to add rocks and plants and stuff, but the crocodiles have a big problem trying to navigate over anything that's not flat. So I've avoided using any rocks in this enclosure, and I've not changed the terrain at all apart from adding the water. For design with this one, I've gone for that Indonesian style design again. Saltwater crocodiles, they do live in Indonesia and Southeast Asian regions, so this fits quite well. Gone with the classic architectural style for an Indonesian enclosure here. I think since I've already added the American alligator and the gharial, I've learned a little bit on what works and what doesn't work for these type of reptiles. For water, well, it's a big pond basically that I've put in here. I get the impression crocodiles would love to hang out around rivers and stuff, so I can't imagine them settling out to sea. But feel free to comment on that if you think crocodiles would enjoy having a little journey out into the ocean or something. The name of the crocodiles, saltwater crocodiles, obviously gives a bit away on where they like to live. So it must be around the edge of rivers and stuff that is going into the sea, considering they've got saltwater in their name. But of course, I'm always open to criticism. So if you think I've got this wrong, please let me know. Anyway, we are about done here with the build. So let's take a look at the crocodiles in the habitat. So here we go, saltwater crocodiles. A medium sized habitat here, lots of water obviously for the swimming crocodiles there. Nice and open and not a big barrier there so guests are getting a lovely view of the crocodiles. Not a hugely active species, they'll spend a lot of their time just having a bit of a float in the water. 
Pretty sure that's true to how these crocodiles would act in real life here. Yeah, just have a float there under the surface of the water. For all the headaches they cause me, they are a very pretty species, so a welcome addition, I guess, to the zoo. Design inside this habitat, I've obviously been very careful with the crocodile's navigable area. Normally with the mud bats and stuff, I'd have loads of rocks around here to make it look a bit more natural, but <laughs> the crocodiles, they can't handle anything like that. They're very fussy when it comes to the landscape and the navigable area. So decoration wise in this habitat, it's all flat pieces. Even the hard shelter here had to make sure this was a huge wide doorway so the male crocodile could actually navigate into this. So there we go, that is the crocodiles into the zoo now, the third large reptile in the zoo. Before we move on, there is a couple of other things to show you at this stage. There's three exhibit animals left to come into the zoo, so I've managed to squeeze in a little area here for them. I've also finished the trio of exhibit animals over here, and we've got the little scarab beetle, sacred scarab beetle, sorry, in this exhibit now. Now, ultimate challenge, can I zoom in enough to see the beetle without no, oh no, we're definitely having problems with the camera here. Easy, easy. Yep, there we go. There is the scarab beetle for you to have a look at. Just a bug doing bug things there. Right, shall we see what next animal is? Oh, it's the little sand cat next. Undoubtedly, to me, one of the sweetest animals in the game. I'm biased though, I adore cats and it looks just like a little house cat there. Just two sand cats needed for the social needs and they don't need a lot of space, so it should be a nice easy build. The only problems I've got with the sand cats, very much like the fennec foxes, they only have a small area that they need for the land requirements. And when you combine that with the fact that they're a shy animal, so you've got to get that one way glass in and stuff, it can look a little oppressive. So that's indeed a challenge that I'm working with here. To make this a little easier for myself, I've basically gone with the same design of the habitat I went with for the fennec foxes. They're both African species, so it does fit in okay. Putting the custom fencing in was a little fiddly for this one though, because it's on a bit of a curve, the path here. The fennec fox one was on a straight line, which was much easier to deal with. I'm certainly not one to shy away from a challenge though, so we did get there in the end with the fencing here. Now, sand cats, very much like the fennec foxes, they don't like a lot of vegetation in their enclosure. So to prevent this looking a bit sparse, I've gone with the technique of putting in a little path here in the middle of the enclosure. Closure. It needed something in there so it didn't look so empty. There's quite a few animals in Planet Zoo that have this issue where they don't like a lot of vegetation and the habitat can look quite empty. What I'd normally do is put loads of rocks in and manipulate the train, make it look a bit better, but the sign cats are quite fussy with their space as well. Originally with this one, I did put a little bit of a raised terrain area in the middle here and then put a retaining wall around that, but because the habitat is quite small as well, it looked a bit weird, so I deleted that started again and we've got the path in the middle now anyway i'll stop rambling so we can take a look at the sand cats here in the habitat so here we go we've got the adorable tiny little kitties the sand cats in the zoo now a wonderful addition these guys are so sweet they're just adorable i just love cats let's take a look at the cute little guys oh how can you not love this little cat yeah, only issue here, they're quite difficult to follow because they're moving around so quickly and they're so small the camera can't keep up. Right, there we go, let's just not zoom in so much. Considering they're such a small animal, they don't need a lot of space. This is a quite a small enclosure, but with the size of them, it still feels quite big, doesn't it? To help break up the space, I've got a pathing bit in the middle here. This is the rustic cobblestone from the European DLC pack. For the barrier in this one, I've basically copied what I did for the fennec foxes. So we've got a kind of North African themed barrier and fencing here. 
Hard Shelter is a custom plaster building. Nice big window for the guests to see inside. And inside here, I created a custom bedding area for them on a raised platform. Interestingly, with the sand cats, they don't have a climbing need. They can climb, but they don't have a requirement for it. So I've kind of nodded to the fact they are a cat and got some stuff in here that they can climb up. So yeah, that's the sand cats in. Let's move on to what's coming up next. Well, yeah, it's more cats. Siberian tiger. Just two tigers for the social requirements. And this is a cold biome animal, so I have an idea what to do with this. Coincidentally, the animal after the Siberian tiger is yet another cold biome cat. That's the snow leopard. So I've got an idea to create a kind of combined habitat for these two animals. I've created a rule with this zoo where if an animal is a cold biome animal and they need snow in their enclosure, I like to put that indoors. The Siberian tiger doesn't strictly need snow in their enclosure, but they can tolerate it. On the other hand, the snow leopard, obviously with snow in the name, they definitely do need some snow in their enclosure. So my idea for this to cover that need is to make a combined enclosure for both the Siberian tiger and the snow leopard. Obviously not in the same enclosure because they would fight like crazy. But for this, I'm creating an indoor space that both the Siberian tiger and the snow leopard are going to use. The design for this building, like what I did with the polar bears, I'm dipping into my design knowledge and architectural knowledge here. Outside of YouTube, my real job, I work in the construction industry and I do know an awful lot about how buildings are designed and why they're designed in specific ways. So in Planet Zoo, I do enjoy sometimes creating buildings that reflects on this knowledge that I have. My idea for the tiger and the leopard enclosures here, this is taking influence from a modern sustainable sustainable building concept. The conservation DLC pack that released last year. Now there's loads of stuff in this pack that is very much based on sustainable buildings. And it was such a joy for me to see what was included in that pack and how some of the pieces are very realistic to what we have in real life. Last time I explored the green roof and making a green sustainable roof design. Well, this time I'm focusing on the sustainable timber idea as well as a pre-manufactured modular building system. So for timber, timber is an incredibly sustainable way to create buildings, as long as it's sourced in a sustainable way that is. So for this building, I've added a timber louvered facade. This is a sustainable design technique that's used to help keep a building cool. So it's slotted wooden beams that are added to the outside of a building and that creates a bit of shadow and nice airflow in between the space of the slots and the wall. The other sustainable design element I've added to this build is the modular design system. This is where sections of a building are created in a factory off-site, then shipped to where the building is being constructed and just simply slotted in place. This is an amazing modern technique for construction and it's an incredibly efficient way to make a building. It's far safer than constructing everything at the site and doesn't need a lot of scaffolding and work at height. It's also a better quality because the individual pieces of the building when it's being constructed in a factory is quality tested at the factory. So now within Planet Zoo, they gave us these 3D printed pieces in the conservation DLC and it's a great piece, but there is a little niggle with me on this one. So in the real world, obviously 3D printing is a thing now and it is used in construction but it's more for small components and things would be 3D printed. You wouldn't get a whole section of wall 3D printed. We're just not there yet in terms of the technology capable of doing that for a whole section of wall for a building. However, what we do have in real life, we manufacture panels for a building. So sectional panels that are built in a factory. So I've used these 3D printed panels to make the back of the building and the side of the building, which is kind of my idea of modular building in planet zoo anyway for this speed build i didn't record a lot of the indoor stuff i was doing with the enclosures because it was such a confined space the camera was constantly clipping through the wall and i know that's going to give some people a headache to look at so we're going to skip straight ahead and take a look at the finished build welcome to the cool cat center i'm so terrible at naming stuff aren't i this is a dual habitat for both the siberian tiger and the snow leopard 
it's a two-story building and guests have pathing both on the upper level and below so nice view for the guests when they're looking at the animals high up in the enclosure here although typical problem here someone is using the stairs to look at the enclosure opposite and speaking of geez i've got a lot of emu there bit of a population explosion <laughs> anyway don't get distracted by emus we're not looking at emus today today is all about the cats now architecture for this building i've used some real life sustainable design techniques so a timber cladding here on the outside dual bonus here of it reflecting a real life technique and it also looks pretty nice doesn't it so thank you planet z for adding the louvered timber wall cladding Nice to see we've got some guests using the upstairs pathway there, getting hopefully a good view of the cats in the upper areas of the enclosure. That's the Siberian tigers there and next door here is where we've got the snow leopards. This upper pathway spans the full length of the building and brings you out on the other side there. So plenty of areas there for guests to get a nice view. There is an outdoor section for both of the animals in here and that was poor planning on my part. The building simply wasn't big enough to take care of their space requirements. So there's a bonus outdoor bit of land for the cats here to enjoy. I think, yeah, let's go and take a look at the view from the indoor pathway. So a five meter wide path through the building. Big open windows gives you a great view of the animals when they're on the ground floor. And right on cue, snow leopards here having a little wander about. They don't like a lot of vegetation, the snow leopards, so inside here we've got an awful lot of rock work to make up for that. I've tried integrating this rock work into the design concept of the habitat. Oh, and leopard using one of the upper levels. Oh no, they're doing business there. Let's, let's not take a look at that. What else have we got going on in the enclosure? Oh yes, something I discovered when I was building this enclosure, the PVC doorway for the walkthrough exhibits. It's actually functional when you put this in a habitat. The animals can actually walk through this and it makes an ideal transition from being indoors to outdoors in a habitat like this. Much nicer than just leaving this open to the elements. Something else for the snow leopards here. These snow leopards are a shy animal, so I've added their bedding area up at the back here, which is out of the view of guests. Made this a private space for them. That's something I'm sure the snow leopards will enjoy. And that is a huge leap there from these snow leopards. Yeah, that doesn't look realistic, does it? I really doubt snow leopards can jump that high and that far in real life. Hey ho, anyway, let's move on with the tour. Since they're shy animals, I've got one way glass on the bottom level here for the snow leopards. The upper level is just normal glass and to make this work, I've made sure there isn't any objects close to the barrier that the animals could get onto. So they shouldn't be bothered by this being open up here. Moving along, let's go take a look at the Siberian tigers. So similar concept here for the tigers, same as the snow leopards. Big difference in this one, the tigers have a climbing need. The snow leopards actually don't have one. So there's a lot more climbing stuff in here for them. Siberian tigers are a confident animal, so there was no need for any of the privacy stuff. And I've got some of the walkways and stuff and the upper levels right up against the barrier here. So you get a great view of the tigers and they're not gonna be bothered about that. The tigers were also a bit more open to having more vegetation in their enclosure, so got more of that dotted about. Oh, and here we go. Get to see the tiger using that PVC doorway there. Just looks great, doesn't it? Outdoor section for the tigers, a little smaller than what I had for the leopards here. And that was just because I was limited on space. Space-wise, the tiger enclosure is a tad smaller than they're comfortable with, so we're into the orange a little bit on that one. That's something I've simply decided to live with rather than having to move everything and make this bigger. So there we go, two more cats into the zoo. I think that might actually be it for the cats now. Not sure if we've got any more of those left. As ever, let me know what you think of this design in the comments. I do love hearing what your opinion is of everything I create. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.